Hello, and welcome to another episode of NFHS Now. I'm your host, John Gillis. History buffs out there will remember the year 1941 for many reasons. It was the year Ted Williams hit 406, the year Citizen Kane was released, and the year that FDR began his third term as President of the United States. However, 1941 might best be remembered as when the Barry Auditorium in Barry, Vermont, hosted its first boys basketball state championship. And here we are, an astounding 77 years later, and it's still doing that. Perhaps nobody knows that better than Ryan Becker, who played twice in the state tournament and is currently conducting research for a book he plans to write about this historic facility that is affectionately referred to as the Odd. Ryan, welcome to NFHS Now. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Ryan, you and I previously discussed the history of the Odd. Could you fill in our viewers about that as well? Sure. The Barry Auditorium was built in 1939 as a Works Progress Administration project and, as you mentioned, held its first state championship game here in 1941. Since then, the Odd has hosted the semifinals or state championships for one or more of Vermont's four divisions for every year, including this year, which will bring it to a total of 77 years, with the only exception being 1943, in which no tournament was held due to war restrictions. And in fact, since 1980, the Odd has hosted the semifinals and finals for divisions two, three, and four for both boys and girls, with the only exception there being 1984, when uh, the meningitis outbreak forced the boys' half of the tournament to shift to an alternative site. So no matter how you look at it, the Barry Auditorium is truly a fixture in Vermont high school basketball. Let's go inside and take a look. Okay, so here we are at midcourt of the Barry Auditorium. And the odd can seat about 1,900 fans and there really isn't a bad seat in the house. And I'd like to take this opportunity to kind of orient you to the space a little bit. So if you look over here to my left, you'll see on this side of the court is the stage side. And during basketball games, the bleachers that you see that come down to the floor will extend all the way up to that black curtain in the back, as well as on both sides of the stage. And that's where the student section is with the team's benches in front of it. And if you come over here to the other side of the court, on the other side of the court to my right here, you'll see that this is both the general and the reserved seats. And while it isn't unusual in today's tournaments to have a sellout and have a capacity crowd, newspaper accounts from the early days of the odd really give new meaning to the term capacity. Um, newspaper articles from the 1940s and 1950s describe scenes in which uh, building and fire codes were either non-existent or completely ignored as there were regularly 25, if not 2,600 people packing every square inch of this space. It must have just been an incredible atmosphere to play in. And when you're in the auditorium, it's kind of impossible not to feel its history. I was talking with a Division I uh, boys basketball coach recently, and I asked him about the Barry Auditorium, and he said, well, I've been coaching in Vermont for more than 40 years, and I've only been to the auditorium once. And in his words, it felt like a time capsule from the 1950s. And I think looking around, you can see features that speak to this sentiment all over. Um, some notable ones include, if you look over my left shoulder here, you can see the elevated press box that kind of looks like a couple balconies over there. Um, during tournament games on the wall, they have antique looking placards that let the uh, fans know who the final four teams are from each division. And my personal favorite is on each side of the main hoop, you can see the wooden backboards and those flank both the uh, the hoop here as well as the hoop behind the camera. So wherever you look in the auditorium, there's really special, unique elements that speak to the historic nature of this place. Ryan, you told me that you played in the odd as a sophomore and as a senior at Whitcomb High School. Tell us about that. Well, uh, John, I was fortunate enough as a sophomore in 1995 to make it here to the auditorium for the state semifinals. Unfortunately for us, we lost to our rivals who would eventually become the state champion that year. But Two years later, we made it back to the semifinals again. Again, We won that game, and then we faced Arlington High School for the Division III State Championship, a game which we won 84 to 61. And as a team that year, that uh, win was special for us, and that season was special for us because we went undefeated at home during the regular season, and we also won the title after petitioning up to play in a larger division. And I know that for um, all of us, the seniors in particular, to end our career on such a high note in this building felt really special. For our viewers' information, Ryan was a four-year starting 6-1 guard for Wickham High School, 
where he scored 1,486 career points. Ryan, what did you enjoy the most about playing high school basketball, and what was it like playing in the odd? Well, John, I enjoyed literally everything about playing high school basketball. Uh, one of the things that immediately comes to my mind is the camaraderie. Uh, growing up in a really small town, I played with many of my teammates from the time we were in early elementary school all the way through that championship game. And in addition to that, many of the guys on the team, we just loved to play basketball and we loved to compete against other teams. Um, beyond that, another thing that was special about uh, playing high school basketball was the fact that coming from a small town, it always kind of felt like we were playing for something more than just ourselves and our team. It really felt like we were playing for our community and that was something that I always felt really good about. And thinking about that reminds me of uh, a writer from Sports Illustrated who visited the odd and attended a game here and ended up writing an article about that game for the magazine, for a 1970 issue of that magazine. And when he was at the game, he was reminded of, and he saw evidence of, that special, deeply personal relationship that exists between high school basketball players and the fans, with the fans being family members and community members and teachers and boyfriends and girlfriends. And he, as he described, the bond between those people was one, in his words, that was through the heart and in the blood. And I feel like as I reflect back on my time playing high school basketball, that was particularly true for me as well. And then when I think about what made playing in the auditorium here special, uh, pretty much it took everything that was special about playing high school basketball and it just amplified it. You know, uh, the teams that get here, they've had likely since day one of their season the goal of reaching it here. And when they get here, they're probably playing in front of the largest crowd that they'll ever play in front of in this iconic setting with a state championship on the line. And although that can feel like a bit of a pressure cooker, in my mind, it's also what makes it really exciting. Do young kids growing up in Vermont dream of playing in the odd? I definitely think kids growing up in Vermont still dream of playing in the odd. Yes, John. Um, you know, the Barry Auditorium hosts divisions two, three, and four, semifinals and final games every year. And included in those schools are all of Vermont's smallest schools. And when you come from a small school, it's quite possible that basketball is the only winter sport that's offered. And so kids growing up in those schools and the communities that support those schools are probably really knowledgeable about and passionate about basketball. And because of that, everyone knows that the ultimate goal is always trying to make it to the odd. Another reason that I think kids grow up these days still dreaming about the odd is simply the sheer size of this space and the atmosphere that it offers. You know, compared to home gyms, the odd and the crowds that, are, uh, that attend these games are huge. And so as a young person, if you're able to see the odd come to life and actually witness a game, you're probably watching your brother or your sister or someone older than you that you look up to running up and down on this court under the lights. And you're probably experiencing the often raucous student sections trying to out cheer one another over the course of the game. And ultimately, you're probably watching teams raise championship trophies and cut down the nets. And that can all have a bit of a Hoosiers-like feel to it. And as a young person, it's kind of hard not to dream of one day being a part of that. Ryan, can you tell us a little more about your research and the book you plan to write about the odd? Sure, John, I'd love to. Uh, I'm really excited about this project. You know, the Barry Auditorium has an obvious connection to Vermont's basketball history, but in a larger sense, I also think it has a connection to the state's cultural history. And while the history of this building and of this court are an important part of my work, I'm especially interested in the experiences and the perspectives of the generations of Vermonters who've come here for what is now approaching um, 80 years. So ultimately, I hope that the odd offers an interesting and insightful window into the values and the traditions of the many small rural communities that comprise this state. And although I'm only in the first phases of my research so far, I've already had fascinating conversations with people from all throughout the state, and I'm really excited to continue those. Ryan, I know you're doing a great job with it, and we look forward to reading it. Continue success, and thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much, John. I really appreciated the opportunity to talk with you. We are joined now by Jeff Bergeron, who is the Director of Buildings and Facilities for the City of Barrie. Jeff, welcome to NFHS Now. Thanks for having me, John. It's a pleasure to be here. Jeff, among the facilities you oversee is the odd. From your professional perspective, what makes it such a great building? Well, I think, John, it's, it's the versatility and uniqueness of the building. Um, it's mostly noted for being a basketball gym, uh, but it's also held farm shows, home shows, sportsman shows. Uh, we just recently had a bridal bazaar here. 
Um, it's just, it's a unique building. It was built in 1939. It's become more of a community center when it was built. Uh, over the years, it's, it's seen many different shows, many different activities, and it's just been like a great place for people to come together. As you know, and as we mentioned, it's been hosting VPA tournament games for an incredible 77 years. How is a building that old able to do that? Well, thankfully, uh, the citizens of Barry City over the years have budgeted maintenance money for the building. Uh, we've put a new roof on. We've done some upgrades to restrooms. Um, it's a well taken care of building. It's a small staff that works here. Uh, they do a great job. And we've also had a few bond votes where we've put an addition onto the building to make it ADA accessible, it connects this building to our alumni hall building next door. And just the fact that we have this volunteer group, the Barry Tournament Committee, that over the years has helped us put these tournaments on and kept the building going. As you know, USA Today did an article in 2004 regarding the 10 best places to watch high school basketball in America, and the odd was among them. What did you and the other residents of Barry think about that? We thought it was great. Um, you know, here we are in Little Barry, Vermont, in the middle of, of the state of Vermont, and we get this national recognition. To be, to be in even the top 25 would have been awesome, mm -hmm. but to be in the top 10, um, a basketball floor where Bob Cousy, the former Celtic, played on and said it was one of the best gym floors he's ever played on, to get that kind of acknowledgement, just it, it builds community pride. I know you've got VPA boys and girls basketball games coming up soon. What other events do you have scheduled for this year? Well, like I said, we just had a bridal bazaar here uh, Sunday. Here it is Tuesday. We're turning it around for basketball again. Uh, at the end of the month, we have the Vermont Trappers Association annual meeting and banquet. Um, this spring, we have the Vermont Comic Expo. We also have coming up in the fall um, the Vermont Comic Con, which is being relocated here from Burlington. And we also have a Vermont Horror Show coming in October. Uh, like I said, it's a versatile building. We can do many things here. Jeff, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, John. We have with us Bob Johnson, who is VPA Director of Student Activities. Bob, welcome to NFHS Now. Thank you very much, John. It's good to see you again. Bob, could you tell us about the great relationship between the VPA and Jeff Bergeron and everyone else involved with Barry Auditorium? What do they like to work with? Well, I think a lot of people don't understand what it takes to run a tournament this size. Uh, you know, and there's two big groups that we end up working with. First of all, we have uh, the, the City of Barrie people who are here at the recreational facility with Jeff Bergeron and his crew, and they're f absolutely fantastic. And they're the people that take care of making sure that, you know, we've got everything ready to go, that the floor is all set, everything's cleaned. And we run, you know, games back to back to back. So, I mean, it's a huge job. Bob, what goes into conducting your VPA basketball tournaments at the odd? Do you have a planning committee in place? Well, it's, it's not actually a planning committee, but the second group that we focus a lot on is what's called the Barry Tournament Committee. And this is a group that's made up of a lot of volunteers that are from the greater Barry area that come in and they do everything. They sell tickets, they take tickets, they end up basically being chaperones over in the student section. Uh, they help people to their seats and they all do this as volunteers. So if we didn't have them, it wouldn't happen. As you know, we're all about the kids. What is it about the state tournament in the odd that makes for such a great experience and a lifetime of memories for the players, their families, and the fans? Well, I think first of all, it's just a great facility. You know, it's, it's very close, so everyone is very close to the court. Um, you know, we get this place packed for a lot of our games. In fact, there are a number of games that will sell out. So the environment that you come into is, is just tremendous. And then also there's the tradition. You know, a lot of the students who are here, they may have had parents who played here at one time or another. You know, and that's the goal for every year for our Division II, III, and IV programs is to get to the odd. Uh, it's just an incredible place. When will this year's VPA state tournaments be held in the odd? This year we, we go the first and second week in March. Uh, the first week will be our girls basketball, uh, which actually will start the last week in February and then we do our playdowns and quarterfinals and then we do all the semis here uh, the first week in March and then the boys will come in the following week right after that. 
Well, Bob, I know your upcoming state tournaments in the auto will be great as always. Thanks for being with us and continued success. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the odd and perhaps one day get to attend the VPA Boys Basketball Tournament in person. For viewers interested in contributing to or learning more about Ryan's research, please email him at the address shown at the bottom of your screen. If you have any story ideas, please let me know and we'll get them on the air. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, take care.